So we're looking at AQA Chemistry Trilogy and the unit code is 3.1.1 Conservation of Mass. The con law of conservation of mass states that no atoms are lost or gained during a chemical reaction. That means the mass of the reactants will always equal the mass of the products. So there's the same amount of atoms in the reactant will be found in the products, just arranged in a different type of bond. This means that an equation that is a, a balanced equation shows the same number of atoms on either side. And you're going to have to really, really, really practice hard at balancing equations. But it's easy to do. All you need to do is consider each atom and decide are there the same number of atoms on either side of the equation. If there isn't, you can't change the small number, you can't change the formula of a molecule or a compound, but you can change the number of moles of the molecule or compound within the equation. So for instance, you can put a big number in front of a molecule or compound, but you can't change the small numbers within that molecule or compound. Have you noticed key words you need to know? You need to know what a molecule is. A molecule is made up of a small number of atoms that are bonded together. They could be elements, you know, like hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, which are all diatomic. Or they could be um, simple molecules like water or methane or ammonia um, or uh, mm, hydrogen chloride, that's your other example. Uh, so simple molecules where there's a small number of atoms bonded together. Compounds refer to different atoms which are chemically bonded. We talk about them in terms of when we talk about ionic compounds like sodium chloride, lithium fluoride, calcium oxide. They're all ionic compounds because they're made up of different atoms bonded together. Okay, three tips to make you an awesome student at balancing equations. First one is this, recognize equations. When you see an equation written down, you might just think it's letters and numbers jumbled together. But the more you get to know chemistry, the more you'll understand that it represents an actual experiment that you've probably seen or probably learned about in chemistry. So for instance, um, I teach my kids the acronym C-O-N-E-D-E-D, -E -E coned ed. Now, I don't know if that'll stick in your head, but it does in my head. And each of those letters represents a different type of chemical reaction. So for instance, the C stands for combustion reactions, where a fuel reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water if it's complete combustion, or carbon monoxide or carbon and water if it's incomplete combustion. The O stands for oxidation, which is reactions which gain oxygen, um, or they lose electrons. N is for neutralization, where hydrogen ions react with hydroxide ions to make water uh, plus a salt. The next one is E. E is for exothermic reactions, reactions that give out heat energy. Um, D is for displacement reactions, where a more reactive metal, a more reactive element, will kick out a less reactive element. You'll have seen this when you've done about extracting metals, because iron can extract copper from copper sulfate, because iron is more reactive. You've also seen this when you consider the reactivity of group 7 because chlorine is more reactive than bromine so chlorine displaces bromine from bromide ions. Go back and have a look at that when you looked at group 7 if you're unsure about displacement reactions of halogens. The next E is for endothermic reactions, endothermic reactions that take in heat energy. For instance an ice pack um, also sodium hydrogen carbonate reacting with citric acid and also thermal decomposition. They're examples of um, endothermic reactions. And finally the last D is for thermal decomposition. I've missed the T out and just gone for the decomposition. That's where a metal carbonate, when heated, breaks down and forms a metal oxide and gives off carbon dioxide. The other tip to balancing equations is this. Don't split up the anion part. So for instance, you've learned about um, nitrates. Nitrates have the iron NO3 minus. When you're balancing equations, don't split the N and three oxygens, put them all together. Say you've got one lot of NO3. The other anions to consider, carbonate, CO3, two minus. Sulfate, SO4, two minus. If you lump those together when you're balancing equations, you'll find it a lot easier. The third tip is this, practice, practice, practice. 
the more you see balancing equations and the more you do them, um, the more confident you'll get. Confidence comes from hard work. So what I would say to you is, is find a sheet on the internet, just type in balanced equations, find a sheet of about 20 of them and do them, but time how long it takes you. Then the next day, have another go at them and see if you can and balance them quicker each time. And that way you're going confidence, you also turn it into a game and hopefully you'll enjoy it. So that's the first tip about the conservation of mass and about balancing equations. Practice, practice, practice and you can do it.